Everybody. Welcome back to the Cupcake Gemma channel with me, Sally, and we are back in Sam's flat today. Now, last week, I asked you guys what kind of lemon tart you wanted to see, and I gave you the option of a classic French tart au citron or an American lemon meringue pie, and I am pretty psyched because you all, well, the majority of you went for the tart au citron, which is one of my absolute favorite desserts. It is really crispy, it is really smooth, it is really tangy, and just a little bit sweet. It is perfect and it's really easy also. It can seem scary because this is a French dessert um, and they do take things above and beyond but this is really simple so trust me I'm gonna take you step by step through it and this is a delicious ray of sunshine on this yet again very very miserable day that we are experiencing here in England but Summer's on its way, I believe, so fingers crossed. But let's crack on with this tart au citron. So the first thing we need to do is make our pastry. And this is gonna be a sweet pastry. So very similar to a short crust, but with a little bit of extra sugar and some egg yolks to give some richness. So I'm gonna make mine in this food processor here, but if you don't have one, you can do this in a large bowl and you can use the rubbing technique, rubbing it between your fingers and your thumbs. So we're gonna start with some plain flour and I've got 200 grams of plain flour, all-purpose flour it might be called where you are so that's going to go into the food processor along with 40 grams of icing sugar some recipes say to use caster sugar but I think icing sugar is a lot better it's a lot smoother um, so you don't get any kind of grains in there and I'm also going to put in a pinch of salt just a pinch because this is a sweet pastry but of course salt's going to enhance all our flavors and lastly I've got butter obviously <laughs> so I've got a hundred grams of really cold unsalted butter which I've chopped up and I've had it in the fridge waiting so it's not getting warm or anything and we're going to pop that in too and we're going to start by whizzing this up pulsing it until we get a lovely fine breadcrumb So there you can see it's looking like breadcrumbs, it's all nice and even as well, there's no massive lumps of butter in there. So now we just need to bind all of this together, which I am going to start by doing it in the food processor and we're going to be using some egg yolks. So I'm just going to crack my two eggs and I'm just using the shells to divide the whites from the yolks. Now before we add them into the food processor, I'm just going to whisk it up just to break it make it smooth. Now we're going to add it into our food processor. There we go. Oh, I love that colour. So you might find that it's still looking a little bit dry, um, which mine is here. It's not completely coming together as we might like it. So we're just going to finish it off by adding a tiny bit of cold water. So I like to put it in a bowl rather than on the surface, but that's just because I'm a really messy person. <laughs> so I'm actually just going to dip my fingers in this cold water and I'm going to use that to bring it all together. So we don't want to put too much water in. So now that it has started to come together, I am going to put it onto the surface. And you might find that, you know, if you've made short crust pastry before, this feels a bit stickier and that's fine. That's because we've added in those egg yolks. So it is a bit more like, it's almost like a cookie dough, I suppose, <laughs> rather than a pastry. So you can just see, I'm just gently working it. You might want to put a bit of flour on your surface if you feel like it's getting too sticky. And then I've just flattened that out into a little bit of a disc that's just going to make it easy for us to roll out later. And I've got some cling wrap here and we're just going to wrap it up. And now this go needs to go in the fridge for kind of an hour minimum, I would say. Whenever I'm making any kind of pastry, I like to do it the night before because then you know that it's had the most amount of chilling. Um, but yeah, an hour if you're doing it on the same day. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so once your pastry has chilled, it'll be lovely and firm like this. You can handle it really easily. It looks really smooth as well. I love, love, love this kind of pastry. And now it is time to roll this out to go in our pie dish. So we're going to be using this as classic kind of quiche dish or a flan dish. Um, you can get them really easily. This is a nine inch. Um, so in the description box below, I've given you all the ingredients for this. But if you've got a bigger one, you just want to times it by two or maybe one and a half times. So we're going to roll this using our rolling pin, but obviously this is going to stick to the surface. So I've got a little bit of plain flour here that I'm just going to lightly dust the surface with. And same with any kind of pastry or pie dough, you don't want to include, you know, get too much flour in your pastry. It's just simply to make it not stick. So again, a little bit on the rolling pin. And now we just need to roll this out and try and keep it as round as we can, which I know can seem quite hard, but my tip is for you to do one roll forwards and backwards, which might not seem like you've done very much to it, but trust me. And then we're going to turn it 90 degrees and we're just going to do the same thing forwards and backwards once, just applying a really nice even pressure as you go. We're just going to keep on rolling. <laughs> until we get it big enough for this tin. It'll be about four to five millimetres in thickness. Now to test that we've got a big enough piece of pastry, I'm going to grab my tin, put it on top, in the middle and we just want to make sure that we've got enough pastry that's going to come all the way up the side as you can kind of see in here but also with a little bit of overhang like this so this is looking pretty good but before we put it in I'm just going to tear off some of the kind of scraggly edges and as much of the excess because we don't want too much pastry kind of hanging over the edges so just very roughly leave the tin in the center so you can use it as a guide Okay, so now it's time to get our pastry inside, our tin, which can seem scary, but like I always say, it's actually not, it's pretty simple. So I'm going to use my rolling pin to aid me, so I'm going to pop it in the middle of my pastry. I'm going to pull my pastry over the top of it, and then you can lift it up like this. This is great if you're doing like a really big pie as well, it means you don't have to handle the pastry. And then we're going to roll it over the top, just gently, so we can make sure it's kind of in the middle. And then we're going to pick up one of the edges and gently push it down into the dish. And just take your time with this. Don't try and like push it all in completely as you're going around. We'll just a little bit at a time. We'll do one round and then we'll go around again with a bit more pressure because this way we won't get any kind of folds in our pastry. And once the pastry is inside your dish, we just want to kind of push it into all the corners. So I like to use this part of my finger to do this, but some people find if they've got really long nails, it can kind of tear your pastry. So a good tip for that is to use a bit of off-cut pastry, dab it in a little bit of flour so it doesn't stick, and you can just push it into the sides like this. But like I said, I prefer to use my finger. And lastly, we're just going to use our fingers to push it into the grooves around the edge of the tin. So this pastry, just like most pastries, has a tendency to shrink when it's in the oven. Um, and so if you wanted to, you could trim the pastry off now so it's level with the tin, but it is going to shrink. So what I like to do, and I think what you should do, because it's kind of the little pro tip, we're going to leave most of this excess pastry sticking up above our tin so that it has room to shrink in the oven, and then we're going to trim it all off so it looks really spot on, perfect, just like the French would want us <laughs> to make this pie look. So I'm going to actually grab my scissors and I'm going to leave about kind of this much that we can see on this side. Um, so, but I've got some really big bits over here, like here on this side. So I'm just going to use my scissors just to trim any extra excess off. <laughs> And now it is time to chill this pastry. Like all pastries, we want to cook it from cold. A couple of reasons for this. One is that it is going to help prevent it from shrinking as much as possible. But also, we have been handling this pastry a lot. So it's very warm and it's very soft. Um, the butter has warmed up. So we want to cook this butter from cold so that it doesn't ooze out. It doesn't go all soggy. Mary Berry tells us that she doesn't like a soggy bottom. So we definitely don't want to do that. We want a really nice, crisp 
pie shell. So we're going to put it in the fridge for at least half an hour. All right, so I know it doesn't look very different, but it is quite different because it's really, really cold and the pastry is much firmer. You can see there's not much flex to it anymore. So now it's ready to bake. Now we're going to bake this shell case before the filling goes in it so that it's lovely and crisp, but we need to prepare it a little bit. So the first thing we're going to do is stab a few holes in the bottom with a fork and that's just going to help it from puffing up so it stays nice and level and flat at the bottom. So just give it quite a few prods all over the base. And this pastry is gonna wanna puff up, so we want to weigh it down so that it doesn't do that and we get left with just this nice empty shell. So what you need to do is grab yourself, normally I would get some parchment paper, but Sam doesn't have any parchment paper, but tin foil is gonna do just fine. So get yourself some parchment paper or some tin foil, and we're gonna push that into our pie dish and have it kind of overlapping the edges, that's fine. It's quite good because it will stop those from kind of burning too much. And once it's in, we're then gonna fill this up with either baking beans, like the ceramic balls that you get. They're really good because they do conduct, conduct heat, so they help to cook the inside of your pie dish. But if not, you can just use some rice or some lentils or some dried beans, something that's gonna, just gonna keep it nice and heavy and weighed down. So fill it all the way up. And this kind of thing, like if you're using rice or lentils or beans, you can just reuse it over and over and over again. Like I've been using this rice for, I don't know how long, very long. <laughs> but it's great, it's great. So off to the oven we go. Now we're gonna bake this initially for 20 minutes at 175 degrees C. And after 20 minutes, it will have kind of dried out enough that we can take this baking beans and tin foil out and it's not gonna puff up anymore and then we're gonna return it to the oven for another 10 to 15 minutes until it's nice and golden and crisp. So the first thing that you need to do once your pie shell has baked is to turn your oven down to 150 degrees C because that's what we're going to bake at for the next bit. So do that now so it's got time to reset. And the pie dish is out and you can see it looks lovely and crispy but it does look a little bit higgledy-piggledy. So now it is time to neaten this up and we're just gonna trim off all the excess pastry that we left there for the shrinkage. So I've got this really, really sharp knife. Normally I would use a small serrated paring knife for this, but if you have a nice sharp, sharp one, it's gonna do just fine. And we're gonna very gently slide it in and just a little bit at a time because you don't want it to kind of crack and then you lose a massive chunk of your dish. So just taking off the tiniest bit as you go. And I'm just trying to brush out as many of these crumbs as possible so that it doesn't mix with our lemony filling. And there we go. Now we have our fully cooked tart shell and it's all ready for its lemony lemony filling which we're gonna get on and make now. And this is so, so simple, I promise you. It is. So what we're gonna start with, some eggs, obviously, and we're gonna have six whole eggs and two egg yolks. Look how gorgeous these eggs are. They're such amazing color. And this is gonna really add to our lemony tart because it's gonna make it really bright and yellow in color. So you can find these really easy actually. You just need to look for golden yolked eggs. Mm, amazing. So first of all, we're just gonna bash these up. We just wanna break them up. We don't wanna whip any air into it. So just give it a good mix to combine it all. Really pretty. Look. Hang on. <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> Once they've all kind of fully combined the yolks with the whites, we can add some sugar. So we're going to add 140 grams of caster sugar. I'm just going to whisk that in as we pour. Oh, 
And then next up, we've got some double cream. So I've got 150 ml of double cream or heavy cream, something nice and full fat. There's nothing not to love in this. It's just gonna be like a lemony cooked custard. Mm, amazing. So now it is time to add our lemons and we're gonna add the juice and the zest. But I'm not gonna add the zest yet because I wanna sieve this just to make sure we get any kind of bits of lemon juice, um, lemon pith or um, bits of egg. We wanna get all of that out, but we do want the zest. So we're gonna zest two lemons into a little bowl first. And once we've zested those, we're just gonna leave them to one side and we're gonna get on with squeezing some lemon juice. So you're gonna need about four to five lemons because we want about 120 mils. And sometimes these lemons are so kind of firm that you might wanna give them a little roll on the surface first. Cut it open. And then you can just squeeze it by hand, but we have this very snazzy little tool here. <laughs> it's actually really hard to press. <laughs> So we should have, yep, about 120 ml of freshly squeezed lemon juice, which we're gonna pour and whisk at the same time. And once this is fully combined, like I said, we are gonna sift it. We're just gonna strain it off, just so that we do end up with the smoothest of lemon fillings. There we go, so I've got a large bowl and a sieve on top and I'm just going to pass it through. Lovely, let me just... Okay, so finally now we're going to add back our lemon zest which is where we're gonna get most of our lemony flavor from. So dump all of that in. Just give it a good whisk. Et voila, it is done and it smells Oh, so lemony. I absolutely cannot wait to eat this. So we've got to bake it. Now, oven is set to 150 degrees C because we want to cook it nice and slow and low. And what we're going to do first is we're going to pop this into the oven on a baking sheet and you'll see why in a second. So come with me. So you can see here, I've got an oven tray in there. We're going to pop our shell on top and then I'm going to grab back our lemony filling and we're going to pour it in like this because this is super liquidy and it can go everywhere. And now this is a scary bit. Slide it on in without spilling any. Done. Okay, so this is going to bake somewhere around 25 to 30 minutes. I'm putting mine on for 25, and what we want to look for is that it has set all the way through, but it's got a slight wobble right in the center. So look for that. And then we've just got to let it cool down a little bit. Now we can eat it. How beautiful is this? Look how sunny and gorgeous and shiny and crispy it looks. I can't wait. I think we should cut some. So you can eat this cold. Like if you want to eat it cold, you can put it in the refrigerator. You can even bake it a day ahead. But I personally quite like to have it at room temperature. So I would take it out of the fridge before I wanted to eat it. Let's give this a go, ready? Hopefully we can hear the pastry. Oh. 
<laughs> oh, it looks beautiful. And the pastry on the bottom looks really short and flaky. Oh, now I like to serve this with a little bit of creme fraiche, just for a little bit of extra tang. Okay, let's give this a go. Mm. It is everything. It is sweet, but not too sweet. It is tangy. It has got the lovely crunch from the pastry. Oh man. Oh man. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. Honestly, it's so, so good. And you saw just how simple that was. Really, really easy. There is a lot of kind of like waiting around whilst you wait for your pastry to cool and then you've got to wait for it to bake and then cool down. And, but it is so worth it and it's actually a really lovely thing to do, particularly if it's a rainy day. Although actually now it's looking really sunny. We brought the sun out, yay! <laughs> I'm so glad that you guys wanted me to bake this one. Obviously, I'm more than happy to give the lemon meringue pie a go as well, so if you do want that, let me know. Any other suggestions, please keep on letting us know in the comments box below or over on Instagram. You can follow me and Dane and Gemma. We'll put all our links on screen and also in the description box below. And please also keep tagging us on Instagram with all your photos. So many of you made that New York cheesecake that we made a few weeks back and they were amazing. And I shared a load of them on my Instagram account too. So please keep sending us your photos. We absolutely love it. And we'll be back next week with another recipe. A lot of you have been asking for skillet based recipes. And let me tell you, we have been working on a little skillet series. We absolutely cannot wait. As a little hint, we've got a cornbread coming, we've got a Dutch baby coming, and loads of other ones. So stay tuned and Dane and I will be back next week with Sam on the camera with some delicious recipes for you guys. But please, please, whatever you do this week, bake yourself a lemon tart. Mm.